Hey everybody, Justin with VMP Performance here. I'm at the gas station down the street from our shop. We're going to find out what happens if you put 87 octane in a 2024 Mustang. loaded up with 87 octane and we've got it on the dyno. Big difference with our car compared to a normal 24 Mustang GT is it has a supercharger on it. This is the Gen 6 3 liter that we partnered with Whipple on. It is a stage 2 kit. I will say it has a stage 1 pulley on it just because we were doing some testing but this is going to be the guinea pig for 87 octane. The reason that I wanted to run 87 on the dyno in a controlled situation with lots of data is because we are seeing some inconsistent dyno results with superchargers on these 24s. Everybody says, well, the gas pump said 93. And as tuners, we've known this for years that we'll get cars that'll come in sometimes on the same day with the same setup, and they'll take different amounts of timing and they'll put out different power numbers. And the reason for that has to be the quality of the fuel. There's various things out there you can do to supplement quality of fuel, um, lots of different opinions on those products. The car may be fighting for its life. It may make 400 horsepower or it may make 600, but we'll know what it puts out for a power number and we'll know how much timing it runs. So if we have this issue come up again, we can say, oh, we have the data. We've seen what the car does. I, I don't care if it's supposed to be 93, it's behaving like it has 87. And that's gonna allow us to troubleshoot these 2024s on a uh, power basis much, much better. With all that being said, I'm gonna try not to blow up our car and don't try this at home. It's taking timing right now, but it's not under a whole lot of load. Okay, I'm gonna try a little uh, third gear. That's not bad. Okay, ripped up to uh, 7,800 real quick there. I can't lie, I'm a little bit scared. I've never done anything like this before. That's, that's scary, it revved out to at least seven grand. <laughs> going to surprise people how much power it made. Power is high, the timing is just freaking tanked. First of all, this is a fourth gear pull. Um, first time I've ever done this, fourth puts less load on the engine. But in a proper situation with the right octane and everything, you never want to pull in fourth. You, you actually won't get an accurate, you get an artificially low number. So this number might be low for 87, but it was necessary to not stress the engine too much. It made 567 rear wheel horsepower and it made 502 rear wheel torque. I let out at 73, 74. It was starting to get pretty spicy up there, knock wise. Props to Dustin and the team in Whipple that built a calibration that'll deal with adversarial circumstances <laughs> brought on by me. What you wanna hear though is the spark curve. About 14 degrees with some drops down to nine degrees. FYI, don't try this at home once again because timing that low creates a lot of heat in the exhaust. High EGTs will damage cats. That's why you just don't see this ever recommended even from the factory type engineering situation. It is 12 to one motor, it needs that 93 octane to live and it needs good premium fuel 91 plus, preferably 93. And if you can't get that, you have to supplement with an additive. All right, you guys probably already figured this out. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and start putting boostane in the tank. I looked at the dynograph, looked at the log, and compared it to some other data I had from like some not so great fuel quality um, runs from some other cars. This is the worst I have ever seen, and I just don't wanna continue to abuse it. I think it's going to take a pull for this stuff to mix in. So one more rough one on the old girl here, and then this stuff will start to be in its veins and it'll start getting happier. But we'll get to see how long that takes and how much it bumps it up. Like 93 today in Florida. So absolute worst possible conditions. Um, 
I want to tell you something about the boostane that I just mixed in here. Uh, it takes a long time for it to get into the DI system because certain situations like idle, the DI is not active. Um, wide open throttle, it's active. Aggressive part throttle, it's active. But I also don't want to heat the car up too much. All right, I'm, I'm not even going to try to get it to, to flush through. I'm just going to make a pull. I'm not going to run it too high. Let's see what it does. Okay, second pull, running our 24 within an inch of its life. 87 octane still in the tank. We did add a shot of boosting beforehand to let it start mixing in. It hasn't mixed in yet because we're still pulling uh, three degrees of timing at 7,000 RPM. The graph still looks like crap. We're making 582 rear wheel horsepower, 497 rear wheel torque. Actually made a little bit more power in fifth gear because it loads the car better. Uh, apparently the octane didn't fight it uh, too bad. So it's really a, a, a lesson to the tuners out there um, when these ECUs eventually become unlocked and people start tuning them. Don't just go change how they do things. This calibration is designed to survive, um, you know, come hell or high water, as they say. I talked about this a little bit earlier, but it's 93 here in Florida. The MCT is 130. We're not going easy on this thing. Coolant temperature is right in the middle of the gauge. It's probably 190, 200. You know, this is real world conditions and I would never race in this scenario. I would never advise putting 87 in it. The question is, how many shots of boosting does it take to get 87 up to 93? So we're gonna keep putting shots in it and find out. Hopefully our first shot of boosting has mixed in and we're gonna make a fifth gear pull, see what it does. Seven octane. Our first shot of boosting is mixing in, and we are seeing a result. This is fifth gear once again, and it's picked up throughout the entire curve. And I can also see in the data logs that the knock sensor is actually trying to add timing. It tried to go positive a degree or two. It did have to pull it back out, but that's a good sign that we're climbing out of the hole known as crap 87. The car has as little as 12 to 13 degrees total knock and just keep in mind this is an average across all the cylinders it's not the individual cylinders some could be worse some could be better the power number it's about 20 more throughout the curve this run shut off early something about these 24s is that they have a ton of systems operating in the background and i now have enough lights on the dash that it's going to shut me down at a certain speed so i'm going to have to take it off the dyno drive it around let it get back to normal and then i can redyno it Picking up from where we left off, in the previous pulls we had 87 in the tank. We tried adding a couple of shots and we just could not get the power above 600 to the tires. So we added an entire can of Boostane Premium, which is 16 ounces, and I drove the car to the gym to give it a really good chance to mix into the tank. Well, we threw it back on the dyno and it paid off. three poles anywhere from 677 to 700 at the tires looking at the data logs the computer is way happier it's adding anywhere from three to five degrees of timing it's running anywhere from 17 to 19 degrees there is quite a bit of bobble to it which means it's struggling with cylinder to cylinder and the knock sensors taking and pulling out but uh, it's a much better off now we know that 87 octane is terrible but a can of Boostane will fix it if you ever accidentally put that in your car. We got some really good data. We know what to expect if one of these cars comes in and does have some bad fuel in it, some 91 or 93 that's just not actually 91 or 93. That can happen for a variety of reasons. Just letting fuel sit, it loses its octane. 
In a future video, we're gonna put the correct stage two pulley on the 3.75, and we're gonna put premium fuel in the car and make some dyno pulls and go over the logs with you. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share. See you next time.